Our next example is working through confidence intervals where we have unknown population standard deviation. Now, this is the more important problem to consider because most of the time we do not know the population standard deviation. Whenever we do not know the population standard deviation and all we have is the sample standard deviation, we need to use the T distribution and not the Z distribution. So here we're going to be calculating a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of migraine attacks for those treated with acupuncture. This is an acupuncture problem. We're looking at a study designed to test the effectiveness of acupuncture for treating migraine. We've got a sample size of 142 subjects treated with acupuncture and 80 with a sham treatment. And we're given a mean and standard deviation for each of those two groups. We're going to compare the intervals here. We have 142 subjects treated with acupuncture and they have a mean of 1.8 and a standard deviation of 1.4. We have 80 subjects given a, tr a sham treatment and they had a mean of 1.6 and a standard deviation of 1.2. So in order to calculate these confidence intervals, no, we don't know the population standard deviation. So the thing that we're working with that's different from the previous example Sigma is unknown, so we need to use the T distribution to get our critical value. So when we're doing these problems, we need to be able to write down the confidence interval here, and that confidence interval will rely on the formula for the confidence interval. If we write down that A is the acupuncture people and S for the sham treatment, We'll write down the information we know about those, which is that the mean X bar for the acupuncture people is 1.8, and the standard deviation for the acupuncture people is 1.4, and the number in that sample is 142. And on the sham treatment, we have mean for the sham treatment, X bar is 1.6, the standard deviation for the sham treatment is 1.2, and the number in the sample is 80. So the number in that sample is 80. So to write down the 95% confidence interval when we have no population value given, the 95% confidence interval for the acupuncture will be X bar for acupuncture plus or minus now here we need a T value, and the T value is related to alpha over 2, so in this case alpha for a 95% confidence interval is 0.05, so alpha over 2 for T will be 0.025, and we need the degrees of freedom, so our T value de depends on the alpha over 2 value and degrees of freedom, which is 1 subtracted from sample size. So degrees of freedom, 142 minus 1, which is 141. Now, we can write that down as the critical T value, but we're then multiplying by a standard error value, which is given by S divided by the square root of N. Now, in order to be able to calculate these critical T values, we have two choices. Usually, we have the tables or we have Excel. And with 141 degrees of freedom, we're going to have to use Excel. Before we go into Excel, though, we will write down what happens with Excel is that you have to be able to give the two-tail alpha value inside of the function TINV in Excel, T-I-N-V, and we put in there 0.05 and the degrees of freedom, 141. So that's the function that you would need in Excel to get the correct critical T value. And um, so before we go into Excel there, can we write down the, the confidence interval for the sham treatment is X bar for the sham treatment plus and minus, the critical T value here will be 0.025 with the degrees of freedom of 79. So degrees of freedom for the sham treatment, sample size minus 1, one that is 80 take away 1, which is 79. And our 
we'll multiply that by that, again, that standard error using the sample mean instead of the population mean, which we don't know. Sample mean divided by the square root of n. So this time, to get the, the correct critical value from Excel, we have to use TINV, insert the two-tailed alpha value, 0.05, and 79 degrees of freedom. Now we have the format for the confidence intervals there in the usual form, mean plus or minus critical value multiplied by standard error. So we'll go into Excel and show you how we'll write these values in Excel. So in Excel we need to choose the TINV function and that requires from us the alpha value 0.05 and the degrees of freedom which is 1, 4, 1. So the correct T critical value there for the acupuncture treatment will be 1.9769. Notice that value is bigger than the 95% value that we would have got with a Z. Now also for the sham treatment, we're using exactly the same function in Excel, TINV. We have to put in 0.05 for alpha and degrees of freedom this time 79. So, we've set up this Excel file so that the mean and standard deviation and sample size are given in a table and we've put in there those TINV critical values that we've used. <coughs> so, the critical values are the T alpha um, critical values that we're using here. So, we're also here going to write down the standard error and the standard error which we'll put into the cell, which is given by B6, we'll use cell references for this. We need the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So we can use SQRT and choose the sample size from the cell B5. And that will give us the standard error. So copying that across, we should be able to get the standard error for the sham treatment without any further working because that will give us the cell reference 1.2 is the cell reference C2 divided by the square root of sample size in C5. Now, to find the margin of error, the margin of error is found by multiplying the, the T value that's in cell B2 by the standard error so we multiply those cell references together and that will give us the margin of error. And again, if we copy that cell reference across for the sham treatment, it will give us the margin of error for the sham treatment, which is found by cell C2 multiplied by cell C6. And now inside of Excel, we can find our confidence interval limits. The lower limit, as we know, is the mean minus, so we can write equals mean, choose the cell reference B3, minus the margin of error, and that will give us 1.57. To get the upper limit, we take the mean and we add the margin of error, and that gives us 2.03. Again, if we copy those cells across, it will give us the lower and upper limit for the sham treatment. And again, remember that Excel will copy those across. Because we haven't fixed the cell references, it gives us the values for the sham treatment directly. So now you can see that we have the lower and upper limits of each of the two confidence intervals, which we'll now take back to our solutions in the, the PowerPoint. So the confidence interval for the acupuncture treatment we had was... 1.33 for the lower limit and 1.87 for the upper limit. And for the sham treatment, we had 1.57 and on the, for the lower limit and 2.03 for the upper limit. So now we're looking at a comparison of these confidence intervals. So it can help to draw a picture here. So if we look at a number line and we have an interval that goes from 1.33 up to 1.87, for the acupuncture and we take another number line and we make that number line underneath it from 1.57 up to 2.03. We can see here that there is some overlap 
in those confidence intervals. The overlap is between 1.57 and 1.87. And because there's an overlap in those confidence intervals, this gives us some information to conclude that we can't say for sure that there's any difference between these two treatments. And we'll be looking at that in, um, in detail later on. It means that we don't have enough information to be sure that the acupuncture treatment is any different from the sham treatment. You'd have to be able to investigate further. And that's our example three concluded. <laughs>